Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan Dusing, and today I'm going to go over an explanation of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. By making this video, I hope to uh, help out some beginner filmmakers and maybe those of you who are not sure what to set uh, DSLR cameras to for all these settings. So first is the actual definition for aperture from Webopedia, I believe. I just pulled it straight from there. The main thing you want to notice is that aperture is measured in f-stops. Next is going to be shutter speed, and I have the definition on the screen for you all right there. And the key for shutter speed is it's measured in uh, fractions of time. And then ISO is just measured in different increments, usually 100, 125, 160. Uh, it varies a lot for ISO, but now I'm going to break down each individual part for you and what you want to set your camera to for them. So first up is aperture, which like I said is measured in f-stops. I have all the major f-stops listed below on the left-hand column, and as you can notice I made this, uh, I tried to make this as simple as possible for all of you uh, by laying out all the basics. So basically what you want to know is that the lower the f-stop is, the more light you're letting into the actual lens. Now this is very important when choosing your own lens. If you're looking at buying lenses, you want to go typically with one that has a the lowest f stop possible, um, which will be like an f like f2 or 1.8 or maybe even 1.4 depending on your budget. And maybe if you're a photographer, you know what you're looking for, you can manage with an f4, uh, but specifically for videographers you want to have a uh, the lowest f-stop possible so you can uh, so you can have the greatest depth of field that's very key for videographers while photographers don't necessarily need that but this whole video is pretty much for DSLR filmmaking in mind so keep that in mind moving right along so as you can see as I did with the f-stops for the aperture I've laid out all the increments of fractions of a second for shutter speed on the screen right now the only thing I'm gonna go over is the lower the shutter speed the more light you let in but there is a special rule for shutter speed that must always be followed unless you absolutely know what you're doing and what effect you're going for your shutter speed must be double your frame rate uh, so if you're shooting something at 30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be 1 60th of a second. If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, then it needs to be 1 48th or as close to that as possible. Most cameras have 1 50th of a second, so that needs to be locked down and you should never change that throughout filming. So now we've come to ISO. ISO is basically a way of actually cheating light in DSLR cameras. The most important thing you should know about ISO is yes, as you crank your ISO up from 100, which is usually the minimum, all the way up to 6400, you can shoot in the dark with 6400 ISO. It's actually quite amazing. But as you raise it that far, your footage is going to get really grainy or your photos are going to get extremely grainy. So again, unless you're actually shooting for a specific style, and you want it to look grainy, which I've done only once, you do not want to crank your ISO all the way up. You want to manage your shutter speed. Uh, your shutter speed should be locked down to whether whatever double your frame rate is, but you need to adjust your aperture and ISO and your lighting for your own video or film to be able to match uh, what you want it to look like. You should not be cranking up the ISO all the time. Uh, you want to keep it as low as possible because then you get the best quality as possible. So that does it for this explanation video of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I know I was pretty brief with everything, so if any of you have any questions, just let me know, comment below, and I'd be more than happy to help you guys. I'm really trying to help people that are maybe not sure what settings they should be dialing their new cameras to, because just a couple months ago I was there as well, and now, since then, I've learned so much, and I'm just trying to help as many people as possible that were like me. So if any of you have questions, if any of you have suggestions for new tutorials you'd like me to do, um, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, aside from that, thanks for watching YouTube. I look forward to your comments and your feedback. Please uh, subscribe for new tutorials every Monday and new skits and parodies and just videos overall on Fridays. So that's two new videos every week. Um, and rate this video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.